Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So I mentioned in the meatloaf, uh, I don't know, a week or two ago that I had this, uh, um, this is actually a steering pivot for a motorcycle for one of the kiddos at work, Josh. And uh, he uh, asked me if I would help him out and I said, yeah, sure, no problem. And uh, so what he needs is um, another one of these, it's just a little longer. So he's adapting a, um, um, oh boy, uh, well, I'll give you, <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember the motorcycle, but he's putting a, um, a Kawasaki uh, triple clamps and forks on a uh, American-made uh, mini bike. So uh, anyway, the, the steering pivot, this is the triple clamp uh, pivot. Uh, he needs a new one. So we're going to make him a new one and uh, I got some uh, steel over there. I measured it up. I got a chicken sketch. I think we're ready to go. Let's check it out. Alright, so what this is is a uh, um, this is a uh, KLX frame KLX 110 frame and a uh, CX65 uh, suspension that we're trying to graph together. And as this uh, Josh is trying to graph together. So basically, it's, you know, it's a hollow axle that's got a couple of bearing journals and then uh, a couple of lock nuts here to keep it all together. Anyway, he needs it a little bit longer. I've made a, a little uh, chicken sketch already. So uh, with all the new, the new dimensions on it. And I don't know if uh, any, anybody else does this, but when I, when I do lathe parts, a lot of times uh, what I'll do is I'll dimension them this way and you see that I have a, a, a Z, this is the Z axis here in this case. Um, I have a zero here and then the overall length here instead of dimensioning the journals uh, back and forth. Uh, and there's a couple of things, there's a little reminders that that little flange is uh, 118 thick that I need to check that um, and um, I don't know what else. Anyway. Um, the only thing that's a little bit weird is these transitions here and um, uh, we want to use a tool that has a radius on it. Uh, this is fairly thin wall so uh, um, although all the you know the major stress is kind of at the journal uh, areas there so this just keeps the spacing. So it's, I wouldn't say it's a highly stressed part in particular. Um, but we still want to uh, um, kind of uh, simulate a little radius in there uh, just so there's not a, you know, a sharp intersection. But anyway, uh, let's go over to the lathe. Um, we'll have some uh, actual machining content on Ox Tools. How do you like that? It's been a while, huh? Well, it only took me two weeks, but uh, I, I still remember how to use a forge, I guess. Uh, oops. Come on, Mr. Wizard. Let's see, you guys can uh, see that. Got a little bump in it, there's probably a scratch on the shaft. So what we got here, this is a 1144 stress proof. Uh, it's actually, if you guys haven't tried this, uh, it's really nice stuff, uh, machines really well. And um, the condition that it comes in, that you buy it, uh, this came from uh, McMaster Car, um, uh, the condition that it comes in is over a hundred thousand psi uh, yield strength, so it's it's pretty strong, and um, uh, machines beautifully. You get nice finishes on it, and you can just kind of use it as is. Uh, if you have something that's not a um, uh, what I would call a wear part, you know, where there's things sliding on it and whatnot. So anyway, let's get started on this. All right, first thing we'll just face the ends here or this end anyway, give us a nice um, what I want is a real nice flat uh, starting place for the drill and um, you'll see that I'm going to actually this, uh, we're drilling all the way through this so um, um, it's actually kind of a deep hole, so uh, we got to uh, give ourselves the uh, the uh, the best chance of uh, drilling nice and straight um, and meeting nicely in the middle. 
because we're going to be drilling it from both ends. At least that's my, my current plan. Look at the chips, how that breaks on that 1144. It's just really sweet material uh, to work with. So uh, when I worked at uh, for Thrasher Magazine, uh, they made all the uh, uh, you know the Venture and independent trucks were all uh, um, the axles that are pressed into the aluminum castings are all uh, 1144 stress proof. The screw machine guys love it. Because the chips break, you know, they don't have these big uh, um, nasty, uh, uh, what do I want to say, uh, you know, kind of hairballs of chips. Okay, so what I'm going to do is this is still, this is still undersized from, um, from what we're, uh, what we're going to be drilling through. Slow it down. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to bore the uh, the front end of this so it just fits the drill. So we get it. So it's kind of it'll behave like a gun drill then, right? It'll. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, look at those look at those chips coming off of there. Isn't that nice? Okay. So I want, you know, maybe a diameter and a half, something like that. Actually, let's just go in until we just touch the uh, bottom of that hole. Yep, okay. All right, so I think we can safely go about 700 deep uh, without smacking the, uh, the bottom of that bore. So let's calibrate the... Uh, Z and then to get a 776 all right let's set the DRO this isn't a precision hole yet um, okay and then I forgot what my my drill diameter is let's measure that so I got uh, 796 is kind of what we're looking for so let me get a little closer to that right now we'll go to the bottom seven okay all right so that should be that should be uh, 800 or thereabouts Okay, so that's 80, um, excuse me, 7, oh yeah, these read backwards, right, 7, 25, 8, 80, oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> 780, great, all right, all right, let's try that, so we got, and the idea is, oops, a little more is the drill should just all right, I think we want just a little bit more so to see the idea is it's going to pile it on the lands of the drill and um, and give it a, a nice steady steady Freddy uh, uh, start there 
And, and see what I mean about the chips with that 1144? I mean, uh, it's pretty nice. All right, so we're pretty close here. Give it a whisker. All right, let's try that. Let's see if we got it. Oh yeah, hey, that's just what I want right there. Okay, minimal wiggle, pretty good fit, okay. And then now that drill, you know, gets its best chance to start straight that we can give it. And, uh, and then when we come from the other side, we'll do the same thing. And hopefully those two holes don't do that. <laughs> drill you have down the hole the more careful you got to be so um, we'll probably uh, peck less the deeper we go here just to clear the chips and get some lube down there the ID right and uh, so that's concentric with the axis and you see that what I want to do is just turn a little band uh, what I'm going to call a pickup band on this just so I have a, a true surface that's uh, uh, that I know is uh, real concentric with that bore right and I think I'm gonna go all the way to the chuck actually because because uh, I can the last thing I want to do on this end before I take it out of the chuck is I want to cut a uh, 60 degree included angle uh, seat on that uh, I'm expecting to have to um, put a center in this so I want this uh, center seat to be cut and uh, and actually real nice and that's probably all I need so that's all um, uh, concentric with the bore and the uh, OD that I've cut and I'll do the same on the other end too once I'm there alright now we're going to Knock this thing off to length. Okay, and that's our overall length. Eight inch, 345. I'm going to go a little longer. Um, notice how I calibrated the uh, important side of this, the tool. Ooh, am I going to make it? Three. All right, let's give it a few, a few thousandths more just so. We got a little bit of room to uh, to work with there. All right, all right. Let's see if we can part this off and. Uh
So as I get close here, I'll see the um, the shaft start wobbling. So I'm just gripping it gently here, and boink comes right up. So you, you can't you can't influence it with your hand, but uh, you can keep it steady. It's called a manual steady rest. I think we're pretty close at this point. down the bore and see what it looks like. Well, this looks pretty good from here. Alright, forgive the handheld, but let's see if we can get a, a good shot down there. So, I'm trying to get on the wall there a little bit so you can see. But, I call that a pretty good, pretty good matchup side to side so let's move on so this line is my first relief I'm just gonna work up to that for a minute I'm working on uh, digging out this uh, center section here, this bearing relief now, and uh, let's uh, keep going here. And uh, this uh, tool's got a nice radius in it, so I think uh, uh, it will work fine for. Uh, no stress riser there at that intersection. We're going to cut threads now, and uh, this is a uh, one inch 14 on the end of this. And what I did was I measured it with uh, the pitch diameter using my uh, my little Starrett uh, thread mic uh, and. These are actually uh, kind of nice. There's uh, several of them. This one happens to be 14 to 20 pitch, and that dictates the uh, the space between the uh, the anvil surfaces there. But so it covers a pretty good range in zero to one inch. So these are kind of nice. Uh, the interchangeable uh, tip, uh, you know, are more versatile, uh, a single micrometer. But the tips are are kind of scarily expensive so these can be had on eBay um, you know for relatively reasonable prices and I think it's it's either two or three of them that covers you know pretty much the range that uh, that you would want to cover so anyway we're going to use this to measure our pitch diameter as we cut the thread here and I put a little little witness mark there so I know what my stopping point looks like so right now I'm going to calibrate the tool against this diameter which I happen to know the, the which is a 0.9994 um, and I'll calibrate the tool tip on that and then uh, I'm just going to use straight end feed on this particular thread here so hey pro tip put it in gear okay let's get a little uh, a little marky on there so I should have used my I got 
two black Sharpies in my apron right now, and I usually have a blue and a black. All right, let's use that. And this is just to help me calibrate the tool point. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to come out and go back to our uh, 0.9994. Oops, come on. Four. And then uh, we're going to make sure that, uh, that we got the thread pitch right. So one thing I didn't bring over here is a thread pitch gauge. Well, good thing I checked because I forgot to shift one lever, and that happens, and that's exactly why you uh, why you check. So let's do that again. I also got a blue sharpie, which if if, if you guys don't already know this, the the blue sharpies are the king of sharpies. They uh, they they last longer. They stay wetter than uh, the black sharpies, and um, um, they're just <laughs> they're just better. Okay, so let's go back to our 9994. Um, actually, I'm gonna go a little bit more just to uh, um, make sure I can make a good scratch, and then. Five, four, three, two, one. There we go. We'll make a nice line. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good now. My instinct said it, uh, it looked fine uh, previously. So let's see here. And this is just a bozo check. It's so easy to, you know, you know, getting set up. Okay, that looks fine. Um, you're getting set up to thread, and uh, you know, you got a lot in your mind and your levers and getting things in order and all that and um, um, and you forget to move one lever or or something like that right all right well, good thing I looked at the camera it was the uh, the flashing red light of doom for videographers the uh, the dreaded uh, uh, battery uh, getting ready to die uh. <laughs> Close now. So five one. So let's go uh, nine forty eight on the pitch here, and then we'll uh, run that one. We'll measure it after this. Yeah, stopped it a little quick there. So we should be in the, um, according to my calculations, we should be in the um, 
pitch diameter range at this point but I want to make it the same as the sample which was kind of at the uh, the lower end okay nine four eight nine four eight it's pretty stinking close. You know what? Let's run a, a couple of spring passes. Um, that's what we'll do. And we'll polish it a little bit and take another measurement. Ooh. Uh, you know what? I'm going to try the nuts on this right now. That's what I'm going to do. Get that out of the way. And let's back this out. So, this should go on. And she does. Okay, feels pretty good. So, I'm stopping. And uh, I'm just going to top those threads a little bit. Uh, I'll measure the OD of those because they're pretty sharp right now. And then uh, do a little uh, lead in and then um, uh, end work. Take it out of the machine. I just want to make sure my. Uh... So I went in. Uh, I put a little chamfer. Oh, actually, looks like I need a little bit more there. Uh, the center was pretty close to that. I went in with a 45 tool and just went down to the minor diameter of the thread and uh, uh, chamfered this uh, this leading edge a little bit. Um, so what was I looking for? Oh, uh, my ring gauge. So this has to fit a, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so that's a one inch, uh, one inch diameter ring gauge. Okay, so now the last bit is to flip this around and finish the, uh, the top, or I guess that would be the bottom. That's going to be the bottom. This line is my uh, my stop point, and I'll measure that in a minute. I just want to create a a shoulder big enough to measure. I should have used this tool. This thing's working really good. All right. I should have this shoulder there. Let's see if I can sneak in there with the old calipers. So, 125, let's see, let's zero that, dink, okay, so it's 125, and what am I looking for, One, 118, okay, so let's make that, alright, this is uh, going to be the end here.
Perf. All right. Uh, I think we're done. Uh, a little bit of scotch bright and a little cleaning, and uh, I think we're we'll call it done. Okay. Well, we muddled our way through that, and uh, actually have some machining content for Ox tools. So, <laughs> been a while, but uh, anyway, caught my interest. Uh, kiddo at work needed a little bit of help, and Josh, thanks for a a uh, interesting little project, and uh, you owe me some pictures of the. Uh, uh, of the completed uh, deal. So that's a nice fit there. And then nice fit there. So should go right into your bearings. This one, um, it fits this front part and it's, it's, it's pretty loose actually, honestly. <laughs> Too loose for machinist tendencies. And this starts, but when we get into the chowdered area here, uh, where something got hot there, um, it's uh, it's not happy. And then uh, your old nuts will work on the new shaft. Put those on for you, protect the threads. And um, if I did everything right, um, let's line those ends up. Yep, it's supposed to be a half inch longer, and it looks like it's a half inch longer. So. Uh, I hope you said half. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And um, um, looks like I still remember how to do some things, but uh, uh, it's yet to be seen. See you later.